Welcome to the Recycle Podcast, where we discuss everyday issues from a mental health perspective. We are your hosts, Dr. LaFanya Jones, Dr. Rashonda Strickland, and Dr. Nichelle Wall. Now don't get it twisted. We're not going to be your stereotypical therapist. What we will be is down to earth, informative, a little spicy, and vulnerable. All right, interns, turn up the volume, grab your pen and paper. It's supervision time. As a reminder, this podcast is not meant to take the place of a relationship with a licensed mental health professional. Welcome back to session 25, The Parent Trap. Okay, interns. This is the bookend to the mini me session. And so basically we're going to be discussing minor and adult children individualizing themselves from parents, from their parents or from our parents, from parents. <laughs> <laughs> them. Yeah, them. And that can be a difficult thing to do, especially if you have a healthy and balanced relationship with your parents. We tend to lean on or err on the side of our parents know what's best for us. Mm -hmm. And so we don't want to kind of venture off. Mm. Yeah. You know, it's scary. It's a little fear there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that happens a lot with sheltered children. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You ain't never lied. That's yeah. the like kid that they're always worried is going to bust at the seams mm -hmm. when they get to college. <laughs> yeah. And they do. Yeah. I got a friend that did that. I'm not going to say who they are, but I got a friend that did that. I think we all know somebody that when they went to school, it's like, girl, what or happened? dude, like, <laughs> what is going on? Mm -hmm. Just out there getting yeah. on a handstand. I'm not going to let me come back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the things that I have to, uh, you know, praise my parents for is that I wasn't sheltered and they did, you know, expose me to to things uh, in the world so when I did go to college of course I didn't bust out at the seams mm -hmm. and they also allowed me to find my own way mm -hmm. you know whatever career path I chose whether it was going to college to get a career or um, you know starting a career they were behind me and some every well, obviously everyone can't say that and even if you do want to go to college for some what happens is you end up majoring in a career that that it wasn't your choice. Ain't got nothing to do with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that kind of goes back to something we've talked about a couple of times is, you know, we uh, I think we talked about this one from a cultural standpoint at one point about living up to parental expectations and, mm -hmm. you know, you're supposed to fit within this certain career field or set of career fields. And then you end up being, you know, resentful or unhappy or mm -hmm. um, frustrated in your life because you chose to live yours based off the rules of others. Yeah. Yeah. I have, I have several clients. Uh, one in particular I've been seeing for a while, and I think she's now getting to the point where she's able to come into her own. But when I first started seeing her, you know, one of the things she wanted to do is become like a, a fashion designer and a writer and things mm -hmm. of that nature. But she felt like her family wouldn't be behind her mm -hmm. because of that choice. And, you know, that's not going to make you no money type of thing, you know. And, I, and so we had to work on her building herself up to believe that if that's what you want to do, then do it. Yeah, I agree with that. I think a lot of people kind of get stuck in, if I go against my parent, then they think I don't love them or that's a sign of me not loving them. Or disrespect. Or disrespect. Mm -hmm. And I, I literally had this conversation this week with a session, I mean, with a session, in a session with a client about, your love don't need to be sacrificial. Mm -hmm. I think we just assume it's supposed to go to a sacrificial level, but I I know 2020 been rough, but we are not in the hunger games. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I don't need to sacrifice yeah. myself for you to live. I don't need to volunteer as tribute. I'm good. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And yep. I think we train our children 
or we have been trained when we were children, young children to sometimes sacrifice ourselves. Because a lot of times, especially in black families, what's the saying? Um, you're not supposed to be heard, seen, but not heard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so that essentially ends up taking the voice from your child. That's true. And that's a dangerous place to be in. You know, I I think we all have dealt with a lot of clients that have had that problem where, you know, any type of disagreement or, you know, correction of a parent was seen as you're being disrespectful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, So then it teaches you to just keep everything to yourself. You don't, you don't learn your voice. Mm -hmm. You don't know that you're, you have a voice. You don't know that your no means no, and you don't know that your boundaries matter. Mm -hmm. And I think it's definitely, a huge issue and I can only speak from the perspective of being a black woman, but I think it's a huge issue in the black family of, um, you can't tell your parents nothing Mm. Mm -hmm. like you can't, (laughs) you can't correct them on anything. Correct them on anything. It's like, why are you being disrespectful or I knock you in your mouth or (laughs) whatever Mm -hmm. the the thing may be. I pull your whole esophagus out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I brought you in this world. I take you. (laughs) Okay. Okay, I got it. But <laughs> at the end of the day, you do you do need to foster a a relationship, parent and child, where y'all are able to talk to each other and discuss issues because parenting is an on the job training. Like you don't you're not gonna get it right all the time. The kid is sure not gonna get it right all the time, and there has to be some. Um, flexibility vulnerability Mm -hmm. in that Mm -hmm. accountability Mm -hmm. big one you know Mm -hmm. respectability Mm -hmm. all the abilities (laughs) you know it's gonna have to be in there or there's not that relationship is not going to grow the way it needs to do because parenting is a job you're supposed to work yourself out of yes if they still need you the way they needed you at three days that they now need you at 34 something is wrong yeah Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I you? tell my clients all the time, you know, the ones that have children and they're so worried about how they're impacting their kids. And it's like, you know, I talk about what you just said, Dr. Wall, like there's you just are learning as you go and just understand that your child is going to come out with something. Everybody yep. comes out of their household with some issue, even leave it to Beaver. For those that, <laughs> that's a major, major throwback, y'all. Mm-hmm. Um, but for those that even grew up in that kind of super on the outside, seemingly healthy, supportive, whatnot type of environment, mm-hmm. even that child is going to have something to complain about. Like, well, my parents were just too nice and they never, you know, it's going to be something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's going to be like, well, you know, I had everything that I wanted and they t- did everything for me and I never got to do anything on my own. And I didn't learn how to be independent. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And but on the outside, it looks like they have this perfect family. You know, you got the husband and the wife and the two point five kids and the dog. But there's still something going on in there. So every child is going to come out of their house with something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's either going to be. Of course, there's a spectrum. So you got low end stuff and you got, you know, your high end things. But. You know, stop worrying so much that you're going to damage your kids to the point of no return. Mm -hmm. Now, if you out here being abusive, that's a whole nother, you know, Mm -hmm. discussion. We're talking about your average Joe Schmo family here, not, you know, families that have like severe domestic violence or severe substance abuse issues or Mm -hmm. um, other types of abuse. We're talking about just your regular run of the mill family. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of times with parents, Many say, you know, I want my child to come in to be able to talk to me. I want to be able to have a conversation, but they didn't try to, they have try to have a conversation <laughs> with you. And then you blow up mm-hmm. that. I mean, we're not saying not to, you know, discuss your disappointment or you're being upset, you know, if that's the case, but still like you have to be able to dialogue about that so that they can still feel like, okay, you know, she said she was disappointed or he said she, he was disappointed, but I was still able to kind of, you know, voice my opinion. I was able to, you know, collect my thoughts and they helped me to talk myself through it and how it was a mistake, why it was a mistake, what I did in the mistake. You mm-hmm. know, I was able to talk through that whole triangle of things so that I can learn my lesson and do something different the next time. Yeah. Something that we talked about like briefly in a session is, 
in that parental relationship, practicing non-attachment, the parent practicing non-attachment, like not allowing themselves to be um, overly invested into what their kid is doing. And then it's a reflection of them. No, if your kid out here in these streets, they for the streets, whatever version they want to be, <laughs> then that's on them. If mm-hmm. you feel like, hey, I did what I was supposed to do, you at some point you do have to let your kids go on and live their life and vice versa. The kids have to work on practicing more um, autonomy, autonomy, positive uh, regard for themselves mm-hmm. because a lot of times they – they don't want to disappoint their parent to the to the detriment of themselves and they're underdeveloped mm-hmm. and i personally see this a lot in um black men mm. um i'm just gonna throw it out there the elephant in the room you know there's a difference between black the way black men are raised and the way black women are raised almost oh, mm-hmm. definitely um and then once you become an adult black women are typically shamed for being too independent yeah, mm-hmm. when they had to do everything. And then black men are shamed for not being able to do nothing. When it's highly encouraged in, <laughs> in childhood. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I remember doing a speaking engagement a long time ago at church. And one of the questions, I, I think I was, I can't remember the topic, but I think I was talking about the differences between uh, girls and boys being raised. Mm-hmm. And when we become adults and... <laughs> Men always ask women, can you cook? Can you clean? And so I was like, well, can you fix a car? Can you get on the roof and change the rooftop? Don't ask me all these questions about the woman's role. I'm doing quotations, the woman's role. And then if I can do it and you can't do the man's role, air quotations too, Mm -hmm. you know, that I think that has something to do with, like you said, women learning how to cook, how to clean, how to keep a house. But then men don't go outside and watch their, well, it may be because some don't have fathers to watch, but I get it, you know, but it's still that underdevelopment thing. Yeah. There's oh, yeah. a, there's an importance of learning. Mm-hmm. And I think we have gendered so many different roles and behaviors to where we just ignorant. Mm-hmm. Like at the end of the day, I think my mama, my grandparents for raising me to be able to go outside and change the oil change my tires, do all that kind of stuff that they call men work or, you know, learn how to (laughs) Mm -hmm. uh, mow the grass, even though clearly I'm a whole asthmatic and be done past that after (laughs) I done did it. That's not the point. The point is I can do it. But at the same time, like my brothers, they can cook. They know how to clean. Like I'm pretty sure some of my brothers even know how to like sew some stuff up. They can do hair. They can do all that kind of stuff. Cause at the end of the day, you being able to take care of yourself is not a gender Mm -hmm. assignment. Right. It's weird that is it's that much. I guess it would be that much patriarchy or misogyny in the world to where it's like differences. I mean, yeah. like it's that, clear cut lines that taking out the trash is a man job, mm-hmm. but washing the dishes is a woman job. Right. Like, when you just messed up that dish, why do I need to wash it? Because you and you just messed it up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but these are all things that we learn, mm-hmm. you know, watching the people around us, and we start our relationships with those expectations. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. There's so many couples that we have come through that have learned some very skewed (laughs) ideas, (laughs) principles, expectations, um, from the people in their family, or they didn't learn anything. So they just accept everything. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's dangerous. Accepting everything. I'm sorry, Dr. No, no, go ahead. No, I was, that was done. Really. Was done. <laughs> but I mean, that kind of brings me back to, you know, our topic, this go around is like those beliefs trickle down and it even goes into like how adult children choose their spouse. Mm-hmm. If they are not, um, and there's nothing wrong with this to a certain degree, cause you want your family to get along with the person that you're choosing. You don't want to be choosing the person that's a hot mess. And they're like, I told you they was a hot mess, mm-hmm. but I'm talking about instances where the person is good for the, their child, but they're like, Mm-mm, they, they can't take my place or Mm-mm, they I'm like, ma'am, we Ooh. not do ma'am and sir. We're not doing the same thing that <laughs> makes for each Dr. other. Chicklet-tone. She's shaking y'all. She does. She flapping a wing <laughs> because that makes like me patty. Think, I don't know. <laughs> Pad, <patty. laughs> i don't know if y'all have seen this show i haven't seen the show but i've seen it on my timeline there's this tlc show called i'm in love with a mama's boy 
No. Mm-mm. Yes. That look like I need to watch I mean, that. Me too. Or sound like sound I need, like need to watch uh-huh. It is. I mean, it is definitely kind of... They TLC actually has two shows that kind of fall in line with what we're talking about. One's called Smothered. And I have seen that one. And then the other one is I'm in love with a mama's boy. Mm. And it really highlights how, you know, there is two sides of the coin Mm -hmm. that, you know, you can love your child so much Mm, mm, and mm. you can want to them to emulate you so much that it becomes unhealthy. Like literally a mini me. But you know what? Uh, I've, t- I've spoken to mothers like that and I was, <laughs> I would say you are ruining him for the world. And she was like, I know, I know, you know, don't do that. <laughs> I had one of my, um, Muslim, um, clients this week say in a lot in their culture that the oldest daughter becomes the second wife of the home and not in a sexual way, unless, you know, somebody doing something they ain't supposed to be doing, but in the way I'm of responsibility. You, <laughs> you, you saw my face. <laughs> I know. I know. Y'all know, y'all know I'll be on the cultural stuff. Um, but in the way of responsibility, like they are in charge of everything that the, the, uh, wife mm-hmm. is in charge of taking mm-hmm. care of her, her siblings taking care of like who's cooking, who's cleaning, doing all that kind of stuff. And it becomes, you're burdening your child. Mm-hmm. It. I'm all for teaching kids responsibility because, you know, I grew up in a, a military home, so I'm all for responsibility. But you can't go so far to where now you creating little adults and then they become kids who have anxious attachment style or they have completely checked out and they're avoidant. Well, they, mm-hmm. it doesn't allow room for them to be a child. So then when they grow up, they become a child. I love, <laughs> I love Michael Jackson, so don't don't you know no slander yes but when he became an adult he was a child because he did not get done it yeah he didn't get to have a childhood because of who he is or was rest in peace but you know R.I.P. right he but he didn't get the opportunity to be a child and so he became an adult and then started doing all these childlike things yeah Mm -hmm. and I think um adult children also kind of this is something that is hard in a lot of the sessions. They have a problem admitting that they have been emotionally and verbally abused by their parents. Almost, and yeah. that's not oh, to yeah. say that your parents didn't do the best job that they could, mm-hmm. but you were abused, baby. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, especially when you say stuff, you're going to be just like insert whomever it is. You're going to be just like your mama. You're going to be just like your daddy or well, see, I think the issue with both what Dr. Strickland and Dr. Wild just said is people don't know that it's abuse, mm-hmm. verbal abuse. Mm-mm. Because it's the person that they love. Right. Yeah. And some people cloak truth. Mm-hmm. You know, so abuse is often cloaked under the, you know, idea of being truthful or I'm brutally honest. And it's like, no. Or it's tough love. Mm -hmm. Tough love. I'm like, yeah, it's tough love. It is painful to hear it, but you're not causing me pain. You're not degrading me. You're not belittling me. Tough love is holding you accountable for what you need to be held accountable for. That don't mean you got a right to go off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Control yourself. How about that? Yeah. I think I said this in a previous session. Maybe one of the early ones was that truth without compassion is cruelty. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, you can be honest with your children. You can set expectations for your children. But if you are just throwing truth bombs at them and you are just annihilating them with whatever it is that, you know, you think they're doing wrong or how they can do better or, you know, all of the different things, then that is cruel. Mm -hmm. If you are not couching that or sandwiching that within, you know, here's how you are doing well. This is your areas of improvement. And, you know, this is how I'm proud of you, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. if it's just truth bombing, then I'm gone. Now that person is sit and left to interpret what you meant by what you said. Yeah. Interpret what you felt by what you said. Mm -hmm. And then I also got to deal with my own stuff about what you said. Yeah. Because a lot of times, as we have said, probably on every session, we do not monitor our emotion and our expression of the emotion so even if you you know 
supposedly are telling the truth. Well, if it's not with compassion and it sounds like disappointment or anger or um, rejection or something of that nature, then that's what I hear because you, you are not, we don't monitor what our, our emotion looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think a lot of times in those situations, parents tear down the child instead of the behavior. Mm -hmm. Say it again. Mm -hmm. Tear down the child instead of the behavior. Mm -hmm. And then there's no teaching element. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know what child came out of your canal and you just think that they supposed to already come pre-programmed. That's, Mm -hmm. that's not how that works. Mm -hmm. So if they're not, tying their shoes correctly did you teach them like everybody don't got good dexterity like come on now (laughs) like Mm -hmm. that's eye hand coordination is real in these streets like Mm -hmm. you you have to realize where your kid is at and just because you want them to be somewhere else it doesn't mean that they're going to be there and then it goes back to what we've talked about in past sessions you end up breaking their spirit Mm -hmm. and you can't expect that if you haven't gone through those steps to teach them you can't expect for them to go from a to z so if you've never taught them how to tie their shoes and they are trying to and you start yelling at them well teach them step by step how to do the bunny ears or however you teach them and to do the mm-hmm. <laughs> to tie their shoe and then so go from a to b to c to d and so on and so forth instead of a to z mm-hmm. this reminds me of one of the people i was testing at um mh mark and the mom was having a hard time with teaching her son how to brush his teeth. Mm. And so for those that don't know what MHMR is, it's an, a set of agencies in um, Texas that are based by County that uh, work with people with severe mental health issues or um, intellectual or physical disabilities. And I work in the intellectual disability and developmental uh, disability side. So this little boy was probably, I think he was maybe seven or eight. I mean, he still didn't know how to brush his teeth. Mm -hmm. And she was talking about how her and her husband were so like fed up that they just basically stopped trying to teach him how to brush his teeth. And they were saying like, well, he should know this by now. And I don't do this a whole lot when I'm testing because I'm just in there trying to determine if they're eligible. But, you know, you some parents, you can just see the desperation on their face that they just don't know what else to do. So I was explaining to her like, okay, so how are you teaching your son how to brush his teeth? Mm -hmm. When you have a neurotypical child, they can sometimes learn things by observation. They just look at you and kind of pick up on what you're doing and get the steps down. But when you have a child with a developmental issue, you're going to need to break down. Like you have to start with like, just turn the sink on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that's how far back you have to start. And, you know, I just, I'm not going to go through for the sake of time. I'm not going to go through everything that I told her on how to teach him how to uh, brush his teeth. But after like that 15 minute, you know, kind of instructional, you know, she started crying because she was like, I didn't realize like brushing your teeth took that much work. I said, because you forget that you learned this stuff. Yeah. And we, she's able bodied. She is able bodied. Mm-hmm. And you forget how you learned things. You forget how you learned how to tie your shoe. I have no idea how I learned how to tie my shoe. It was I just, a struggle. <laughs> but I know, you know what I'm saying? But I know my parents taught me mm-hmm. and I know I know how to do it now. I don't remember learning how to brush my teeth, mm-hmm. you know. So you just mm-hmm. do things with the expectation that people are just going to naturally learn these things. But you have a child that is not going to ever be able to learn in a way that your other children know how to learn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, that's always a battle, understanding chronological age versus maturity age. Like, people don't understand that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you have to understand that all of your children are not going to learn alike anyway, even if even if there are no disabilities involved. True. They are They're all, all different. Yes. Lord, please they, say that again. <laughs> they are all different. Because <laughs> that, that bothers me so much how you can want your kids to be x y and z but then you treat them in such a way to where they will never be x y and z but the expectation is still there Mm -hmm. i don't understand that you're not giving them nothing to get there Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're just supposed to get it by osmosis and then the comparison yes to the (laughs) to the other children like why can't you be like your brother why can't you be like your sister Mm -hmm. you know that's that's not abuse but it is unhelpful Mm -hmm. 
yes. and emotionally damaging. Yes. You know, yeah. yes, I agree with you. Not everything is a rises to the level no. of abuse, mm-hmm. but you can definitely be damaging mm-hmm. nonetheless. You yeah. can damage that spirit real quick and it, it, it makes the child feel defeated. And then all of a sudden now you have a child that's acting out because they don't know how else to get that emotion out. Mm -hmm. That's why I always kind of hated that um, old, I don't know if it's a wives tale or old saying or whatever that sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never hurt you. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that is such a lie. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm sensitive. That hurt. I'm Mm -hmm. like the words, that's what sticks in people's head. Now this is not to say that bruises and hits and cuts and things don't hurt, but those also leave psychological scars. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's the words and the results of actions that do hurt. So it's like, no, like you have to be very careful and mindful of how you are presenting yourself on Mm -hmm. a daily basis so that you don't fall into the, the parent trap, Mm -hmm. that part, Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) you know, of think one thinking that you're one way that you're not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then two, creating the very thing that you're afraid of yeah yeah and i think going back to what we said earlier i think some parents even decades later still believe they're above reproach Mm. oh yeah i've had many clients who are in their 40s or you know early 50s who have parents that are in their late 60s and 70s and are still having problems with mm-hmm. communicating with their parent boy when them when it's time to set them boundaries in session oh oh god they clam up Ooh, so they clam up but also like the um what is this called the the feedback that they get from their parents oh gosh it like it's if i could i don't do this if i could go and just pick them up and like cradle them like ayala be doing sometimes <laughs> like <laughs> and rock them i would yes mm-hmm. but that's that ain't appropriate um because they just hurt them even more it's like i'm trying to do what's right for me and i'm being kicked and mm-hmm. you don't hear me still and it doesn't matter that I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing, but because I'm not doing it the way you want me to do it, it's wrong. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And and even with that, for those of you who are having difficulties in that area, this is why probably all of us start with teaching you how to be grounded in who you are first. Yes. Because if you are not grounded in who you are first and you try to approach your parents, you will crumble very quick. Mm hmm. Because it's hard. It is. And that's the thing. We know it's hard because you love your parents. You definitely, I mean, we came from a, a age of, you know, be, di- be, re- I can say di- be disrespectful, be respectful. You bet not. <laughs> I Get know. knocked out if you want to. Exactly. <laughs> be respectful, obey your parents, obey your parents and obey your parents. That's the era that we came from. Mm-hmm. And so since that's mm-hmm. the era, we don't want to go against that. Yeah. And there, there should have been clarifiers on that. Mm-hmm. There should have been some clarifiers on how to handle when your parent is disrespectful and how you bring that back to them so that once you become an adult, that's not something that you're still having to figure out how to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause then those conversations are uncomfortable and I, I'm sure all of us can attest we've had to have those conversations yeah. and we grew up in pretty healthy family systems, yeah. but it's still hard. You're like, Oh my God. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Like, like I talked about on the session back, you know, a few sessions ago, my mama don't play. Mm-hmm. Her name mean what it means. <laughs> so I know anytime that I talk to her, I need to come correct. But I almost, <laughs> I almost have to go back to like little, mm-hmm. little niece shell and be like, well, mom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I have to make sure this voice is real right. Mm-hmm. So it don't like, cause I know if I, if, if this tone switch just a little bit, Mm-hmm. Cause she's not one of your little friends. Exactly. No. <laughs> <laughs> My mama's favorite phrase is "Don't forget who the mama is." Mm. That was her. I'm not one of your little friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'd be like, oh, I didn't even say nothing that bad. <laughs> I would tell the story that, but she don't don't do yeah, it. Yeah, she don't would do get because I'm not, I'm not so getting in trouble bad. with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna say, tell a story. And she's going to know exactly what I'm talking about. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's hard, though. And I think sometimes that is repressed so much or suppressed so much. Surpass, suppress, repress. Y'all know what I'm saying. (laughs) The point is they don't do it. 
and you end up you know kind of putting your parent on a pedestal yeah and they become your god and your ruler and you have to go check in with them before you can make your own decisions Mm -hmm. and that's not ever good no you become an indecisive adult Mm -hmm. like you can't make any decisions we talked about that i believe in the passive the um passive aggressive passive aggressive Mm -hmm. session yeah um and that's that's a lot of how i want to say the only way but somehow people become passive aggressive you don't know how to make decisions Mm -mm. you become a perpetual child Mm -hmm. Mm. a bunch of woman and man childs one you know running around (laughs) man babies yes because you just have no idea how to do anything for yourself because you know like dr wall was saying you have placed your parents in the status above you Mm -hmm. you know if if you put someone before yourself then you know it really leaves you in this space of being invisible Mm yeah you know that you really don't exist because all of your desires, your wishes, and your failures, so that's something we haven't talked about, mm-hmm. that fall on that other person. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't leave you responsible for anything. Yeah. Yeah. And this is not to say that you can't go to your parents and, you know, seek their wisdom on a, a big decision or a decision that you're trying to make. And mm-hmm. you just, but the thing is, their decision shouldn't be the be all yeah. and the final say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At the end of the day, you need to confer. Mm-hmm. with yourself mm-hmm. worry about yourself <laughs> like the little girl say in the car seat um first and then once you kind of know what your options are you go present them to somebody who you trust mm-hmm. and who you know is going to have your back if that's your parents do that if it's your home girl homeboys whatever that's that's how you do that you don't go to them first and you don't know what's going on unless you are in a place of crisis that's different right mm-hmm. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's certain tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's A-N-C-H-O-R period F-M. Right. I want to have a question for you guys. Mm-hmm. Which do you guys think is the more unhealthy, damaging, dangerous descriptor? Um, <laughs> an enmeshed parent child relationship or a avoidant slash dismissive parent child relationship I think it's pros and cons to both Mm -hmm. just to be honest because neither of them are secure attachment styles Mm -hmm. that ends up happening and you can really do some damage Um, and then it's almost like that child creates a self-fulfilling prophecy and then they seek out people like that to attach themselves to mm-hmm. um like i'm thinking of the clients i'm thinking about my own life like is both of them can be very detrimental mm-hmm. yeah so. i i definitely agree i think on the surface uh, i'm sorry i didn't mean to cut you off That's dr okay. uh, jones uh i think on the surface the enmeshed relationship can look healthy Yep. I was, on the surface. I was getting ready to say, I think <laughs> enmeshment is the one that can break apart easier. Cause mm. you know, we can teach them boundaries and they can separate eh, a little bit, but, <laughs> but learning to love somebody is a little bit harder. Yeah. Man. Yeah. If we've had a distant dismissive relationship, mm-hmm. like learning to forgive you mm-hmm. for that. Mm-hmm. That's what I was thinking. Back in. Hmm. You got to check back in. Yeah. yeah. Cause that's, I was thinking that while I d- agree with both of you ladies that they have both have their own set of, you know, very horrible, um, outcomes. I do think that the, 
Oh, we might need to tell them what uh, dismissive enmeshment is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here's y'all psych 101 lesson for today. Uh, so an en- enmeshed relationship. So this, um, like I was just saying a little bit earlier about the TLC shows, like I'm in love with a mama's boy and smothered. Like this is uh, where you know everything about everything. Mm. So, you know, this person knows how much money you make. They know what time you get up to go to work. They know if you went and bought, you know, McDonald's for lunch. Yeah. They know, you know, you've been thinking about getting a car or they know about your relationship. Like they know things, intimate details about your life that the average person is not going to know. Mm-hmm. Or even sometimes like your partner is not going to know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's an entanglement. <laughs> Parental entanglement. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is of course to an unhealthy degree, Mm -hmm. you know, all of the, these types of terms are usually the extreme versions of those. So there's a a level of togetherness and closeness that any relationship kind of needs, but an enmeshed relationship, just think of like a, um, if you're a visual person, a ball of yarn. So there is no real beginning or end, uh, to, the individuals they're just all together Mm -hmm. yeah um a dismissive kind of detached relationship of course is going to be the opposite end of that this is the you know you stay in a child's place you don't belong here this is adult business you don't have nothing to do with that um parents that rarely interact with their children um seems very cold yes very sterile very cold very um emotionally inept i was gonna say almost seemingly unloving Mm -hmm. um sometimes these types of parents can see their children as little adults they have the expectation that you're just going to fall in line uh and not you know question anything there's not a lot of playing and, and and joking and those types of things it's just you're an individual i'm an individual and that's it and we exist Mm -hmm. (laughs) um so uh like i was saying a little bit earlier that i do think that the enmeshed relationship can lead to codependency later on in romantic relationships Mm -hmm. but the dismissive kind of detached style of parent child you know i think that goes back to what dr wall was saying like you have to like learn to love learn to accept learn to check back into this or not even check back in check into this relationship for the first time right for the first time and get to know a person that you've technically known your whole life it mm-hmm. reminds me of that um what i think is music song teach me how to love i love that song mm-hmm. me too teach me how to love <laughs> yes come on music <laughs> <laughs> absolutely yeah and, and and the thing is that's a a difficult thing for an adult mm-hmm. to learn for a person to learn how to do that as an adult i mean you kind of get set in your ways yeah. and so it's like when you have to teach a person that that's draining yeah and i think it as an adult um it can lead to you searching for emotionally unavailable partners Mm-hmm. You don't realize that you're searching for emotionally unavailable partners, but that's kind of what you end up with. Because unfortunately, we tend to try to work out our, you know, past demons or past, you know, relationship problems in our current romantic or sometimes friendships, uh, relationships. And because you've never had an individual show you love, genuineness, gentleness, nurturance, you end up choosing people that are, you know, maybe a workaholic or someone that is a womanizer or whatever the female version of womanizer is. <laughs> I don't know what there's a specific word for that, but we're just going to call it a manizer, <laughs> a wombed manizer. <laughs> uh, you know, you end up choosing those types of people that are going to further kind of ignite that part of you. And that's the thing we, when we have those types of uh, wounds, what we do is we continue to seek things that will validate that experience, mm-hmm. that uh, interpretation though, because you, you de- definitely develop some interpretations and some beliefs behind those types of things. So you continue to seek people in situations that will continue to validate those things 
so that you can continue to prove yourself right. Yep. Mm -hmm. That this is how life is supposed to be. Mm. Boy, that self-fulfilling prophecy and And that confirmation bias Mm -hmm. is a, Mm -hmm. boy, those things are, they'll get you. Um, I don't know if we've ever talked about confirmation bias, just kind of, no. So psych 102 lesson. Mm -hmm. Uh, Confirmation bias basically means that I look to my environment and only see the things that support what's already kind of in my head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so if I think that I'm a bad person, then I'm only going to pay attention to the things that confirm that I'm a bad person. Mm-hmm. And I will discount anything that suggests the opposite. Yep. Go, go on and just add another one in there and talk about cognitive dissonance. <laughs> Cause that go with that too. <laughs> yes. So cognitive dissonance is basically you have two competing ideas, feelings, um, thoughts that exist at the same time Mm -hmm. and i don't know what i would want to add on to that you're not really sure how to proceed with both of those ideas you with cognitive dissonance you have two different views like you said and then your view your belief system is being challenged by this second one and regardless of the amount of proof facts that are evident you still are going to go with what your you, belief system is because it is going to shatter your world mm-hmm. versus going with the true statement what happens is we don't some people that have struggles with that cognitive dissonance is that they don't know how to allow new information to come in and uh kind of integrate with what they already believe so that they can then begin to unfold things to mm-hmm. cre- to yep. come up with some sort of solution they continue to go with like Dr. Wall and Dr. Strickland has already said, they continue to go with their path. Yeah. Think of it like if you were in the matrix and then Morpheus gave you the red pill, blue pill choice, you went with the matrix choice and then you weren't prepared for the matrix. So you tried to get back in the matrix. It's that thing, like mm-hmm. living inside the matrix or living, mm-hmm. you know, outside of the matrix. It's that kind of thought process. Side note, do you do y'all know they about to make another one? No. Another matrix? Yes. I no. said y'all better come on. <laughs> okay. John Wick. <laughs> 7,000 years later. I love John Wick. And our homegirl is in it. Jada. Okay, oh, Jada. Oh, so I she's coming you back for this one. Okay. I thought girl. you had died, girl. I All know. Right. Okay, That's we digress. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. But the parent trap, like we've kind of been talking about, guys, you know, this is is something that we hope you can have a good takeaway from this session. You know, we want to make sure that when you're listening, this is useful information. So when you go back, hopefully, that this is sparking mm-hmm. discussion amongst you your family and friends that you can Come on break in generational curses thank you <laughs> that you can go back and look and see like well dang like okay I recognize you know my aunt you know I don't know my aunt you know sweetie pie <laughs> <laughs> not sweet, not sweet. You know, she was. You know, her. My 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 uncle used to have this weird relationship with you know my my grandma or my grandpa or whatever it is, or even you and your parents, and and really seeing that you can do differently now that you have information to recognize that these these things are going on. Yeah, yeah. Step into who you really are. Like that's one of the main reasons why we wanted to do a lot of the sessions. Uh, for December is we really that's a struggle time for so many people whether it's family related issues whether it's self awareness um, it's the it's the culmination of the year that you've had and if anybody has been alive um, Mm -hmm. we know that this year has been a hot mess so just because it's been a hot mess don't mean you still don't need to do your work Yes. Yes. And I th- I think honestly, this is a perfect year to have dialogue with family yes. because we have so many things brought up in society. I mean, society itself can bring out the conversation, you mm-hmm. know? And so I think that this is a time for both parent and children to start those dialogues and, 
And and so that now both parties can start having those boundaries. So when you children are having discussions with their parents, if, you know, they parents feel like a particular, I don't know, tone in the child's voice is disrespectful, Mm -hmm. then that's the time to correct it, but not the information, Mm -hmm. you know, and even with children, you know, you may decide now to be a, I don't know, advocate for the poverty uh, oppressed people Mm -hmm. and not become an attorney anymore. And this is the perfect time for you to do that because now is it's needed, Mm -hmm. you know, and you have to know that this is what you want to do. And if this is what you want to do, regardless of what your family, your parents, your friends say, then that's what you do. Now have a game plan, but yeah, do it. Yes. Have a game plan. I had a question for you guys. Like for you personally, what do you feel was one of those difficult conversations, the topic um, that y'all had to, to have with both parents, one of your parents that once you became an adult. Mm. Oh, that's a good question. Hmm. (laughs) I think I had a difficult conversation with a parent about the other parent. Oh, okay. Um, but I think I still think it was difficult for that parent to hear that conversation. Got you. Um, because of how they saw it affected me. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Cause it was still even difficult to have that conversation with that parent, even though my, my parents um, have been divorced for many years now. Um, they don't have a, combative or Mm -hmm. um you know it's not out here being toxic yeah they don't have a toxic relationship with one another I don't know if I would go as far as to call them friends but they definitely don't have that type of relationship that some divorced parents have yeah you know they can very easily speak to one another um so you know there is in particular in regards to that conversation you know some reservation that I don't want my opinion about or my feelings about one parent to influence negatively, you know, their mm-hmm. experience um, of their former spouse. Yeah. So. Gotcha. I would have to say mine would have been. Uh, so, you know, after you get your degree, you know, it's not as easy as people think to get a job (laughs) in your particular field. Mm -hmm. You know, when your parents are definitely helping you um, to survive uh, financially, you know, of course they want you to go ahead and get a job, you know, because, and not that it was like, you need to go ahead and you need to get a job. It wasn't like that, but it was like, after so long, it was like, well, have you thought about just getting another job and, you know, just to get you by until you get a job in the field. And so I had to have that, conversation I granted it could have been my pride that made it difficult because I had to face the fact that like I can't keep putting this on my parents but I still had to have that conversation like I didn't go to school to to work somewhere else outside of my field yeah Mm -hmm. you know so it was difficult because they wanted me to do something different than what I went to school for Yeah. yeah you know I got you I would have to say mine Oh, was probably like stepping in to my voice and sharing when things hurt me mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. I am the queen of being like, oh, no, it's OK. Like, I, I don't I don't ever want to rock the boat of people that I love. And I've had to have that conversation with with both of my parents. Um, now, of course, totally to different reactions but you know the point is I have to be on top of like setting that boundary Mm -hmm. and it's hard for me to do that because in your head you're like well you love me so (laughs) yeah you shouldn't you shouldn't Mm -hmm. stop shitting on yourself um Mm -hmm. you shouldn't (laughs) want to (laughs) um Mm -hmm. do that but at the end of the day I don't think people realize that you're loved one is probably not seeing it from your perspective at all. And Mm -hmm. so if you don't say anything, yeah, they can't change. 
That's mm-hmm. right. They don't know that you're as sensitive as you, in my case, as sensitive as I am, or you have to talk to me in a certain way. You know, we've all, mm-hmm. between the three of us, we've talked about that, how mm-hmm. like, hey, Mm-hmm. You know, because I know that I'm sensitive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so you have to have that um, that conversation. And it's hard. Like, I remember I was I was tearing up. I was like, "Whoo, I got to get my life together. Because, <laughs> yeah, that's like your, your first uh, for real, for real stance against your parent. And it's not like against against, but it feels like that in the moment. Well, anytime you have to address something with a parent that hurts you. Mm-hmm. It does feel disrespectful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And even if they didn't put that type of feeling on to yeah. you, it does feel like there's something about telling this this person that mm-hmm. they hurt me. Yeah. You know, it's not like I'm telling a coworker like, man, you know, that, I ain't like what you just said. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, right, what I'm right. <laughs> yeah. you know, this is someone that has, you know, again, we're talking about your regular families not your super abusive ones but this is a person that has dedicated your entire life to you Mm -hmm. yes you know and that is a hard thing to say like you know what I know how you feel about me I know what you want for me and but this thing that you did affected me negatively Mm -hmm. that's a hard thing to say to somebody yeah and N- knowing full well that it's going to hurt them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that'd be the part. You're like, I'm hurting, but I don't want to hurt you. And I know it's it's a healthy hurt, but it's hurt. Mm-hmm. Right? And the thing is, the, the point of this part that we're discussing now is expect for there to be some hurt. Don't expect to, you know, have a conversation with anyone, but don't expect <laughs> to have a conversation with someone and you know that you're going to say some things that may be hurtful. It may be shaming. It may not per se shaming like you're shaming them, but they may become Feel shame. Shame. Yeah, mm-hmm. because you, you've you addressed it. So expect for some hurt feelings to be in there. Yeah. Um, and give yourself time mm-hmm. to like yeah. feel it. Maybe not fully discuss it, just say what it is, and then y'all can come back later. Because I know in both of my situations, when I first had to have those conversations, I had to do that. Like, we just need to separate for a little bit. Mm -hmm. One of them was way longer Mm -hmm. because that particular parent is mad disrespectful. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, you ain't going to talk to me. (laughs) Because mm, yeah. the other the other me came out. It was no longer the daughter. It was the other. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the other. Oh, now we just two adults in here. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you squaring up? Like, <laughs> let me calm down. <laughs> Go for a walk. Yes. Yeah. Well, and then sometimes you may have to preface it by mm-hmm. saying, you know, what I'm about, what I need to say to you is hurtful for me to even have to say. Mm-hmm. So yes. I know it may be hurtful or disappointing or mm-hmm. offensive and you know and then go forward yeah yeah and that's not to say that every parental and child relationship is not salvageable some of them you are going to have to let go yes and that is going to be really hard yeah i think that probably needs to be its own session yes about being okay with letting go of unhealthy parental sibling mm-hmm. familial cousins yeah like and <laughs> blood ro- ain't always friends in water. romantic even jobs mm-hmm. like letting go of I had a flashback because <laughs> <laughs> there's multiple levels of relationship even yeah. therapists yeah yes you know letting go of relationships that are not benefiting and bringing value or pouring into your life mm-hmm. Yeah, they no longer serve you, and it's okay to move on. It's not a reciprocal relationship. Boom, mutually beneficial. Yes. It is not. So y'all let us know. That's something y'all interested in. Uh, So we normally end off our sessions with a quote, and today our quote is brought to you by Robert Fulgham. Don't worry that children never listen to you. Worry that they're always watching. So, okay, interns, process your notes. Be sure to catch us next session and find us on all major platforms at The Recycled Podcast. If you're a new intern, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Thanks for listening. And remember, 
We are shifting and reshaping our psyche through healing conversations and connections, one discussion at a time.